Awesome. Uh, I guess we're good to go. Yep, great. Great. All right. Uh, thanks, Leah, and uh, thanks to the rest of the DDD Melbourne crew. It's lovely uh, to be back. Um, today, uh, my talk is a shout out for any front end devs uh, who, are, who are in the house. Um, I'm uh, Alison Ravenhall. I'm a digital accessibility specialist. Um, these days I work at Telstra. Um, if you want to uh, catch me on Twitter, I'm at Raven Alley. And for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about labeling text fields with ARIA. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, ARIA is an accessibility specification, um, an extension to HTML, uh, which enables us to mark up um, our web uh, components uh, to make sure that they work well with assistive technologies in particular, uh, used by folks uh, with disabilities. Um, one of the ones that usually comes to mind is the screen reader, uh, which is a piece of tech typically used by people who are blind or have low vision. Um, if you do want to shout out, uh, please do. Um, I've got plenty of time to talk about accessibility. It's my job. Um, Otherwise, I'm actually going to um, uh, preface this talk by saying, if you can avoid doing any of the following techniques, please do. Um, so <laughs> I'm about to give you a whole bunch of advice, but my first piece of advice is don't use it if you can, if you can avoid it. Um, the HTML label element, is the original and the best way to label a text field. Um, just make sure that you use the for attribute to link that label to its text field in code um, so that a screen reader doesn't have to guess or worse, just leave it sitting there unlabeled. So do please use a label if you can possibly get away with it. However, I do admit that sometimes label isn't good enough. It doesn't always do the job. Sometimes you might want to uh, build a composite label out of multiple sources uh, of text that's on the screen. Sometimes you've got a, a, a text field where there is no text label on the screen to link to. Um, so we, but we still need to label that text field. And sometimes uh, your text field may be accompanied by format information, example, example data, instructions, errors, and all of this sort of supplementary information. And you really shouldn't be stuffing a label with all of that stuff, but we do still need to link it to, to our text field somehow. Um, ARIA is a good way to do that. All right, so here it is. Um, the first one I want to talk about is ARIA labeled by. ARIA labeled by uh, is an attribute that you apply to the text field um, and it can contain a space separated list of IDs uh, pointing to other containers uh, on the page. For the example I've got on screen, um, we're talking about the day field uh, with the bold border on it. And the label of this text field in code is actually date of birth day. I want to be able to uh, differentiate this day from another day, which may be in my form. I might be capturing date of birth, date of employment, plus date of engagement, plus date of death. I don't know. There's lots of dates in a person's life. Um, and, you know, many of them could be on the same form. So we need to be able to differentiate between this day, that day, and the other day. So knowing that it's the day of your date of birth is relevant. So ARIA labeled by will line up all of these IDs and just announce them all in a row. So it will literally say date of birth, day, uh, edit text, type in, and off you go, start typing. So if, you've, if you want to compose a label of multiple strings, um, ARIA labeled by is a really good way to do it. 
Now, this is a, a very common scenario for a search box. Often search fields are not accompanied by a text label on the screen. Um, often uh, the search box is implied by the um, inclusion of a magnifying glass, whether it's at the start of the field or on the button accompanying the text field. There is no text that says search that we can hook uh, onto, but we still need to label this uh, text field in code. So the way that we achieve that is by ARIA label. It's very similar to ARIA labeled by, I appreciate that, and that's why I'm here to explain the difference. ARIA labeled by contained IDs that were pointers, ARIA label contains a string. So this is where you pop in a string of your own devising, you can make it up, whatever it needs to be. You'll notice in this particular example that I've applied an ARIA label uh, to both the text field and the button because the button doesn't have any visible text either. Um, you'll also notice that the two strings that I've defined are very, very similar. Searchmysite.com and search, uh, you could reasonably expect, hey, that's pretty confusing. How do you know which one's the text field and which one's the button? Uh, fortunately, screen readers are smart enough to include element types in their announcement. Um, so a, a user will hear searchmysite.com text field or search button, and that will provide the context for, for a user who can't see the screen to understand what element they're, uh, what element they're currently focused on, and then they'll understand how to interact with it. So ARIA label is all about, I have uh, no text on the screen to, to hook to, um, I need to define it myself. So here's a string. Now, some text fields get pretty complicated. There's a lot of uh, supplementary information that you might want to link to a text field, but you do not want to stuff all of that stuff into the label. The reason that you don't want to stuff all the stuff in the label is that it makes it very hard for someone who is using speech to uh, interface with their computer as, as opposed to a keyboard or a mouse. Um, in order to use the text field on this screen using speech, I would activate it by saying, I would expect to activate it by saying tap date of birth or click date of birth because date of birth is the label of that text field. If we started also adding all of the format information and the error information, the, the name or the label of that text field becomes date of birth, dd slash mm slash yyyy, error invalid date. And that's a really long label and that's a really hard thing for someone to say entirely correctly for a speech interface to recognize and activate the right element. So we want to reserve the label just for, uh, you know, the essential text to identify this field, and that's the date of birth. What ARIA enables us to do is to also link the supplementary information, um, this format information and areas and stuff, um, using the ARIA described by attribute. So ARIA described by is like ARIA labeled by in terms of format, it takes a list of space separated uh, IDs, which point to other um, pieces of text on the screen. And it appends those uh, pieces of text at the end of a screen reader announcement, as opposed to the label, which comes first. So uh, a complete announcement for this particular item would be date of birth, text field, 12 slash 20 slash 2021, DD slash MM slash YYYY, invalid date. That's a lot of stuff to hear all at once. I appreciate that, but it's the whole context of what you need to understand in order to use this uh, text field effectively. You need to know the label, you need to know that it's a text field, you need to know what's currently in it. You need to know the format that it's expecting. And you need to know the fact that it's currently in an error state. It's, it's a lot to take in, I appreciate that, but um, this is the way to do it in a good format. 
One really important thing to point out, ARIA described by is not a label. You have your label, which is date of birth. ARIA described by is just for the supplementary stuff and it's appended at the back end. So please make sure that you have a label defined by either the native label or ARIA label or ARIA labeled by, and then use ARIA described by for the extra bits. So think of it as nice to have on top. If you're a fan of reading specifications, and I totally don't blame you, the ARIA specification is, you know, edge of the seat excitement. Um, you may also notice that there are a couple of other um, items that catch your eye and sort of go, hey, I could use that for labeling too. Um, ARIA details uh, sounds like a, like a, a reasonable option. Um, like ARIA described by, it contains a pointer, um, but different to ARIA described by, it points to rich content as opposed to flat string. It is not a label and it also has very poor screen reader support. So please do not use it. ARIA description is another one that I've had suggested to me. The um, developers have come to me and sort of gone, hey, I can put a string in ARIA label. Can I put a string in ARIA description? Um, and give some extra context to a screen reader user. And while I love the idea, um, and I, you know, I love the intention, um, again, it's not a label. And much more importantly, it doesn't actually exist. Uh, it's not in the specification. Uh, you'd like to think it was. It, it does seem to make sense. It does seem to sort of um, align to the, the ARIA label pattern. Um, it is actually in a draft version of a future publication of ARIA, but it hasn't, you know, it hasn't hit the streets yet. And it certainly doesn't have uh, any sort of support in the browsers or in uh, assistive technologies. So ARIA description is a waste of time. So uh, hopefully you've got some ideas about when and how to label your text fields on the front end. Um, like I said at the top, I'm Alison. Please get accessible. Um, I'll check the chat to see if anyone anyone said anything during that. If you love accessibility and you want to learn more about it, um, I'm also on Notist, N-O-T-I.st slash Alison Ravenhall, um, where there's a bunch of other talks that I've done uh, about all things accessibility and front end and design and that sort of thing. So thanks very much. All right, let's have a quickie squizzy. Ali, just do it. I absolutely love that, Raf. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, newbie fed. Oh, yay. Love newbie feds. Ask all the questions about accessibility. If, you're, if you haven't heard any mention of accessibility at your work, please, I encourage you, ask the question. Are we doing accessibility? How are we doing it? What standard are we meeting? All that sort of thing. Uh, Curtis, uh, can you recommend a good screen reader? I'd love to run my blog through one. Ooh, ooh where do I start? Where do I stop? Uh, <laughs> um, the, wide, the most widely used screen reader, um, as reported by uh, the most um, the mo most recent screen reader user survey um, is a product called JAWS. Um, JAWS, unfortunately, is only for the Windows platform, um, which precludes a lot of developers uh, from using it um, unless they're running virtual machines. Um, it is also a paid product, though it does have a, a 30 minute or a 45 minute uh, mode where you can just jump in and, and have a play. Um, NVDA, yes, thank you, Curtis, is the link to um, uh, JAWS. Mish has mentioned NVDA. Um, that would be my, my second recommendation. Uh, again, it's also a Windows product. It is open source. Um, it is uh, run by um, a not-for-profit charitable organization, which is based out of Queensland and was written by two blind uh, developers who live up in Queensland. Like, 
that is just tops. So I heartily support NVDA. Uh, for those who are on Mac, um, you uh, may or may not be aware that your Macs do ship with VoiceOver. Um, it's already uh, in your operating system. All you have to do is turn it on. Um, there are a lot of um, articles online about how do I turn the screen reader off? Uh, because it does change the way that you operate with your device. Um, same thing with your phone. Um, it's a it's a very worthwhile skill and a very worthwhile tool to get going, um, but be aware it will feel very, very uncomfortable. Um, the other thing I would also recommend is that um, uh, you, you can download some plugins uh, in your browser to just do that first level of accessibility checks. Uh, obviously, Chrome ships with Lighthouse and Lighthouse has an accessibility uh, check within it. That's the easiest thing to do. Um, there's also a, a really good plugin that I use regularly. It's called Axe, um, A-X-E, by a company called DQ, D-E-Q-U-E. -E. Um, they're also responsible for writing uh, the Axe library, uh, which is on GitHub. And, uh, you know, it's freely available and forms the basis of a lot of automated accessibility scanning tools. Um, RAF. Thank you for your question. I know it can be super hard to do WCAG, and WCAG is the standard um, that I, I hit. A -A 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 -A. <laughs> but hypothetically speaking, if everyone just did semantic HTML, would that be enough? Um, no. Uh, semantic HTML will get you probably a level A, which is baseline. Um, triple A, uh, you're talking about really gold-plated, gold-standard kind of things like uh, providing sign language interpretation on all of your multimedia. You're looking at design considerations like limiting your long-form content to 80 characters wide so we don't have, you know, super wide tracking for, for vision. Um, it's sort of like next level stuff. Um, there is more to accessibility than picking on devs. There's a lot to do with designers and there's heaps to do with content. Um, so, you know, the semantic code goes a long, long way towards the developers getting a, getting a big tick in my book. Um, so, yes, please build buttons that are buttons. Don't use divs, um, you know, and I'll be your best friend. Um, oh, thanks for the link to Axe, Curtis, um, backing me up there. Thank you very much. Uh, it's probably time for me to stop sharing and to uh, get off my soapbox. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's great. Yeah, so lots of really nice feedback there. So thanks very much, Alison.